City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at Consolidated.com. Hello and welcome to another edition of City Spotlight. As you can see, we are outside for this episode and we are back in a familiar spot here in Season 9, our second trip to Teutopolis here in Season 9. We're taping here on May 10th at the Teutopolis Community Park and we have a special episode for you to help us out. We welcome first time to the program, Tyler Repking of Repking Media here in Teutopolis. Tyler, welcome to the program. Thank you, Raheem. Appreciate your time. Glad to have Tyler here. Tyler and I have ran, in, ran into each other uh, through other media um, engagements, events, uh, games, I guess, if you will. Tyler is a uh, runs a business here in uh, Central Illinois that he uh, goes out and tapes ball games, interviews athletes and coaches, and presented me with uh, a chance to share some of his work on a special athlete here in Teutopolis. Before we talk about that athlete and the feature that we're going to share a little bit of here in a second. Tyler, you're a first time guest here on City Spotlight. Tell us about yourself. Yeah, so I'm a 2014 Teutopolis High School grad. Uh, I have been running my own media company, RepKey Media now, for almost six years. Actually, it'll be six years in August. And uh, basically what I do is promote local athletes, local musicians, uh, help, help get them recognized, uh, athletes as far as college recruitment. Um, and then music bands, na people who are singing songwriters in Nashville. But uh, I have such a love for sports and music. And uh, number one thing about them is bringing a positive impact on their life. And hopefully, I can tell different people's stories and, and trying to uh, not just for my, not just help them out, but never know what could lead to down the line. Uh, your home base is here in Teutopolis, yes. and uh, the feature we're going to share on is on a. Uh, topless athlete who's now playing collegiate softball her name is Tia um, before we dive into a little background on Tia and why we're at this uh, lovely softball diamond here in Teutopolis um, this community uh, we, kn we know about Teutopolis and the love for their sports um, being here in this scene of Teutopolis Effingham County where you do a lot of your work how important are the student athletes in this community, what what do they mean to Teutopolis? It's critical. Uh, we have so much. Number one, we have a lot of talent. Number two, we have a lot of people who put the work into what they have become to the people they have today. Um, but we're, we're a tight knit community. Um, t t uh, Tia is my neighbor, and the thing the thing about this this community is they, we come together in so many different ways. Where we have a passion for sports, we care about one another, and when when we when we do that. It, it forms a, a bond that you really don't ever see in different communities. So, uh, no, I mean, I, I've, I've, gained, I've grown to uh, not just to know this area, but from growing up here and, be, and, and being a, being a T-Town grad, you learn to, to understand why we take so much pride in who we are as a community. Fantastic. Tyler has already put together uh, a feature on this athlete. Tia, what's the last Tia name? Tia Prupst. Prupst, okay. One of those T-Town names I don't want to butcher, but Tia is a student athlete now playing collegiate softball at Parkland in Champaign. Yes. And uh, obviously played uh, high school sports here in her native Teutopolis on this ball diamond and whereabouts here in the area. Uh, Tyler has a feature he's put together. Uh, the full-length version is already online. We'll share with you where you can find that uh, throughout this episode. We're going to show a little shorter version of it uh, here in just a bit. So we're going to give you a little context uh, here with Tyler. Obviously, this is his work. Um, tell, tell, you, tell me why you were inspired to do this feature on Tia. Number one, because uh, Tia is a great person. She's a great person. But number two, she's a very positive, which is that's basically who I am. I, I'm not a negative person at all. I'm it's all about positivity in this world. We need more of that. Um, but also, Tia and I connect on a mental health level too, um, because of what happened to her and, and of what I struggle with my mental health as well. But uh, but also trying to bring bring an impact to her as far as she could change somebody else's life, just like we have each other. And um, the positive impact goes so much further than people realize with, with Tia, um, from 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 her accent to where she's at now. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's unbelievable what what you can the, the 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 publicity you can reach on on what what's happened to her. In this feature, the version that we're going to share with you, a little shorter than the the full version. Uh, what was the basic accident that happened to her? So basically, Tia about a year and a half ago in November, it'll be two years in November. Uh, okay. Tia actually fell. She was in a deer hunting with her dad, okay. and uh, Tia actually fell 20 feet out of a tree stand. Wow. 
Wow. And uh, she uh, she basically came down and she was inches from being paralyzed. Um, oh, wow. And uh, what it came down to, the first thing she said was, am I, am I going to be able to play softball again? And uh, so from, from that incident to immediately going to the hospital, um, going through going through the the time of trying to figure out okay she i mean she almost died but she could have she could have but mm -hmm. uh, she didn't thank god um, right but knowing that she's a friend close uh, close to me but also my neighbor i know kind of how she has overcome obstacles and i know we'll get into that too okay we're going to go off the shoulder here and ju for for just a couple of minutes here because this is the location of one of the important moments of tia's uh you know, come back, um, and you're going to see that in the feature. Again, uh, this is Tyler Repking of Repking Media, and he has a feature on Tia Props. It's on Tyler. It's on your on your uh, YouTube page. It's on my YouTube page on Repking Media. Correct. Okay, very good. We'll have a graphic on during the feature to steer you that direction. The feature has already been up since April, but now we're going to go off the shoulder and have Tyler explain a little bit about this location here at Totopolis Community Park and why it is important to Tia's story. So this is the dugout where she sat in. Um, she had a specific seat actually right there in that circle, okay? She talked about, we, we talked about how, we're going to talk about how we go into the moment of when she come out, the, out to the mound, okay? Nobody in this community knew what was going on. So she sat there, okay? She comes up, obviously emotional, of course, but uh, she comes out here and, and basically everybody like, oh my gosh, what's going on here? So um, fr from the moment of Coach Tipton, Crystal Tipton, our softball coach there, and now able to uh, come up here and, and take the ball from Courtney Gibson, our pitcher. Courtney comes up and takes the ball, gives it to her, okay? So Courtney Gibson gives it to her. Now she, Tia, kind of tearing up, of course. She uh, basically smacks the ball against the glove. Okay, she gets ready. And here we go, pitch, throws the pitch. And I mean, the emotional part of not just that, but of the team coming together, but of everybody coming together, everybody hugging each other, tearing up, the emotions of not just for Tia, that was the first time she got to pitch or set foot on the field since her junior season of high school. Um, but it's not just that, it's, it's, it's the community, the emotions of how everything came together for her. And when, when that was done, she was able to, to go back to the dugout, okay? And, and, and the hugs came, the, the emotions of everything, um, that is why this. That is why when she, when she is done, um, she can look back on something like this and say, "Hey, I at least got to got to throw one pitch." And the funny thing about it is, the girl that she threw against was a girl she's a teammate now at Parkland College, and that's Grace Busher from at, at Effingham High School. So, um, kind of talking about that moment of you may never see something like that ever again. And, and, and so that, that, that dugout was kind of a centerpiece to where T was at in the first place. So um, when her mom and dad, Tia's mom and dad were here and, and, and they, were, they were speechless, like what just happened? How did, how did we get to this point? And that means it's Tia's hard work that has gotten us to where we are at today. All right, Tyler, thank you very much for that awesome description of, of, of Tia and that moment. I'm, I'm, I'm sure the emotion was just overflowing in this, uh, in this park and with the community. Um, people watch this and they see the full-length version that you have uh, online through your social media pages. Uh, what do you want people at home to, to get out of seeing this feature on Tia? I want people to get out of, uh, no matter how, no matter what type of an obstacle that, that, uh, that you go through, doesn't mean that you have to completely stop doing what you're doing. Um, she, she goes from being a, I mean, she's a star softball player in the first place, mm -hmm. but, and, and she, she's a great pitcher, throws really well, but um, when something like this happens, I want people to realize that a small town person, even no matter who you are, right. you can make an impact on other people's lives, no matter how bad an injury can be, to, to help to, to bring in a positive impact on how, how you go from being a great pitcher to sitting in a dugout and not being able to do anything at all and make an impact in the dugout. Cheering on your team no matter what, being a team role model, helping, helping the young kids out. Hey, let's go, hey, you know, just cheering them on. And, and that's what I love. You, you know, some, some people who don't realize what goes on in people's lives, that can change in, in a heartbeat for other people. So I want people to realize that bringing an impact, I know I say that a lot, but, but I can't stress that enough, you right, know? Right. So. 
in our last minute. Again, glad to have Tyler Repking of Repking Media here in Teutopolis. Tyler, you, you've recorded so many ball games, uh, a lot of them here in Effingham County and throughout central Illinois. Um, where does this feature, because you've done several features as well, mainly ball games you've taped, but as far as the work that you've done through Repking Media, where do, where do, you, where do you put this up there as far as uh, pers- on a personal level? Because Tia, Tia, as you said, is, yeah. a, is, a, is, a, is a close friend and neighbor to you. She's a very unique person. She's a neighbor. She literally just lived a mile from my house. Uh, <laughs> but the thing about Tia is uh, she, <clears throat> this one ranks up pretty high. I spent about 10 to 15 hours of editing this video, uh, putting this together. That's some work. And I, uh, but I, it's not, it's not all about me. It's about her. And uh, right. I wanted to make it special for her because this is a story that I really never done before. But I also want to make it special for her and the family, considering I, I, I know them really well. But uh, no, as the one thing I wanted to mention was Tia is a very, she's a great person in general. Um, aside from an athlete, right. she's an even better humble person. And you'll see that ever whenever I talk with her as well. Okay. Very good. That's Tyler Repking of Repking Media. I'd like to thank Tyler for reaching out to me to be able to share this inspiring and uplifting piece on Tia Prepst of Teutopolis. And let's, uh, let's go to that little bit shorter version of Tyler Repking's feature on Tia Prepst of Teutopolis. Tia Prepst. Um, I am a graduate from Teutopolis High School, class of 2022. Um, I'm now a freshman at Parkland College. So about a year and a half ago, I guess, uh, November 19th, um, I fell 20 feet from a tree stand after I shot at a deer. Um, I guess it was kind of a traumatic experience. Uh, I was with my dad at the time. Um, I just, it was kind of a freak accident, kind of just, well, out of nowhere, I just fell backwards and landed on all fours, kind of like a dog on my um, elbows and knees. And I landed in my back, kind of just cracked and um, I shattered my L4 vertebrae, um, cracked my sacrum and my pelvis. So um, I was immediately airlifted to the hospital and they went through surgery um, for, and they were a little bit nervous for the fear of paralysis during that surgery. So it was kind of a hard um, thing to hear for me and my parents because we weren't sure if I was gonna walk or be able to just play sports or do anything that I should be able to do. So it was kind of just traumatic, but um, after a 10 hour surgery, it went well. And um, about two days later, um, I walked down the hospital hallway and they started extreme therapy um, about a month later. So uh, yeah, and I've been doing therapy ever since. So, um, so I went to Sarah Bush in, here in Effingham for about three and a half months. And um, it was hard at first. At first I worked on just moving my legs up and down and just going, um, just doing stretches and just little motions like that just to get me back in mobility. And then eventually as I got stronger and more flexible, they started doing stuff with bands and just stuff like that, just to get my um, muscles moving again and the, the stuff I haven't used in a while um, since surgery. So and then I started doing that and then kind of started getting more intense at the near end of it. Um, and I started doing things like jogging and just regular motions that kind of were intense, like a workout kind of. So yeah, it was cool. It was fun. It was definitely challenging though. I, mean, I was really just nervous to take a first step out of my hospital bed because I was like, what if I just collapse to the ground or what if I just can't? can't walk and I was just like super nervous but um I guess she said the nurse said you just need to take a couple steps and see how that goes and if you don't like it or it feels not good then we'll lay you back down we'll try again tomorrow and so I remember we went in the hallway and I took a couple steps and I was like oh this is kind of I can kind of do this so I just kept going and going and I walked ended up walking down the whole the whole hallway and back um, with just no one helping me, you would just ride with my mom right by me and no walker or anything. And it was super cool. I was super emotional just to know that, um, I can at least walk and do things like that. That is, um, something I thought would be taken away from me, but it was definitely a good experience. The injury happened going into your softball senior season. What were the emotions like as you were in that moment? Um, well, funny story. Um, Immediately after I fell and hit the ground, 
I don't know why, but the first thing I said was, can I have a play softball again to my dad, even not knowing that I could walk or anything like that. Um, it was pretty emotional because softball has been my whole life since I've been like nine or 10 years old. Um, and I was super stoked for the senior year because I knew that I would be the starting pitcher for varsity. And um, it was hard at first, um, just eventually just coming to the realization that I wouldn't be able to play and I'd have to watch from the bench. Um, but um, as soon as the first games and practices started, I knew that my team was behind me because they were just so supportive. Um, they always just made sure, made me know that I was there. They never forgot about me. My coach, Crystal Tipton, she she always pushed me. And even though I wasn't on the field physically playing, she pushed me mentally and physically off the field to just be the best person I can be. So um, it was definitely a lot easier with the people that surrounded me. Um, without the coaches and players, I don't think that it would have been as easy. I just, every single game showed up and just tried to be just a leader. I knew that that was my role now. Um, I always try to be a leader anyways on the field, so I figured why not be a leader off the field too and just lead my team to victory um, from the bench, from the field, um, just knowing that I could be a positive light to the team. Um, I know that it was important for me to just stay loud, stay energized, and just know that I played a role of um, being a leader and just having a positive mental attitude every game. And I think that some of the younger girls uh, looked up to that because it was just kind of easy for them to see a senior on the bench cheering. So it was easy for them to be right behind me cheering as well. So I feel like it made a little bit of a difference. The, doc the doctors told you that you could throw one pitch on the mound, okay? What, what went through your mind, but also from the community standpoint, your mom and dad had no idea and how emotional they were. What does that mean to you? Um, so I remember that week at therapy, I, I was really just, I was like, well, maybe on senior night I can do something, throw a pitch, um, to just have a net bat, something like that. And I was just super excited to just tell my therapist, maybe she'll give me some good insight that maybe I could. And I didn't really have super high hopes knowing that I couldn't twist still. And I had, no, um, a lot of restrictions still. So I was not super high hopes, but I was just like, okay, maybe this will work. But um, I remember I talked to my therapist and I was like, maybe um, on senior night I could work hard and just maybe try to throw one pitch. And she was like, you know what? We can make that happen. As we're gonna work on it in therapy for two weeks and we're gonna get you to where you can at least make a circle with your arm and get your leg out there enough to, to leg a pitch in there. And um, it, was super, it was super awesome to just hear her say that because I knew even if it was only for one one pitch, it would still be meaningful, even knowing that my parents don't know and the community doesn't know. Um, it was kind of just a nice surprise on senior night for me even, even though I knew. Um, it was just super cool and the community was behind me and it was just awesome to see that support that I had. When I did go up and throw that pitch, um, Grace Busher from Effingham, um, she was the batter. And um, at the time, I mean, I knew of her and we were we were good friends. I didn't know her super well. And um, her mom and my mom are really good friends and we're co college roommates in, in college. And um, it was just such a good experience because she was so, so sweet. And when I threw that pitch, obviously she wasn't allowed to swing because I wasn't allowed to play defense. So. Um, she did a really good job handling that and she was just so sweet and came up to me and hugged me and congratulated me after the game and little did I know we were going to be uh, college teammates and now we're best friends and it's super cool that we live that experience together and now that she gets to uh, come behind me and support me every single day um, through my physical therapy journey in college and she's super supportive and one of the best friends um, that someone could ask for. Hey, let's go Grace! I 
I just think that um, through all this, this journey, um, I've gotten really close to um, God in my faith and I've grown in tremendously. Um, and I just think that from a standpoint of always just kind of going through the motions that this experience made me realize that I needed to step up my game as a person, as an athlete, as a, um, um, in my spiritual, in my spiritual life that you only, you only get one chance at life. And I think that this kind of made me realize that. Um, and I just want to be like a light to others and for them to know that, um, no matter what you're going through, it's, it's, um, it's easy to forget that you, um, you only get to live once and it's just become a habit for me to be able to just help others know that, um, to just to have a positive energy in this world because negative energy doesn't get you anywhere. So I just think that I kind of took my own advice and I kind of tried to just be, um, the best person I can be every day just so that. Um, others kind of have a reason to smile. So I think that I just took that leadership because I knew that um, I needed to and that people needed me. So that's kind of the reason behind it. Um, I knew when I was recruited um, my junior year that I was recruited to be an athlete and um, they knew that. And I mean, immediately we talked and they said, we want you um, for your athleticism and your personality because I know that you can bring both to this team. And I really took... Um, Join that and I thought that was just so um, kind of them to just tell me that and just that I know that I was on this team for a reason. Um, and then once my kind of athleticism was taken away, um, I knew that um, my chances of maybe being an attribute to this team was lower. And after this year, I know that's completely not the case. They've been the most supportive coaches and I've had the most supportive team that I've ever had in my entire life. And they just made it to where I was um, always just a big part of this team. They continually tell me that I'm such a big part of this team because I, um, I bring a positive attitude. So I try to just, I know that um, this is my role on this team and I try to make it a priority to just be positive and just to um, always be supportive of my teammates, always be the loudest in the dugout. It's so nice to just know that no matter what um, role I take on this team, that they're supportive of me and they seriously, every single day, um, they push me and support me. If I'm doing therapy at practice, they're always around me, um, hyping me up and just cheering me on. And even if I'm walking on the treadmill at lift, they are always coming by me, giving me high fives. And they're just so easy to be um, positive around because they give me positive energy back. So it's just such a, it's such a nice thing to have a team like this because um, it's just different. And it shows that not only does this help our um, record with our athleticism that our team just shows um, so much togetherness, which is why I think that um, we are doing so well. The way that we um, have been performing is because we play as a team and that just shows um, in their every single day at practice, they show up, um, they're behind me, um, I'm behind them. And then at games, we show up together and we lead together no matter what happens. So it's just super cool to just have that team aspect. On a, on a mental health side, what goes through your mind knowing that I kind of know you more? Um, I think it's just easy to just know that you're always been supportive of me, um, no matter if it's athleticism or um, just a personal level. You've always pushed me um, to just be the best athlete and person I can be, and you've always been one to just always congratulate me and always be um, behind me in all my successes. And even if um, I don't do as well, like stuff like this, um, it's easy for you to know that um, even if I'm struggling, you're always supportive and just know that um, um, that you've always been behind me and working hard to just cover um, athletes around us and just knowing that their successes bring an attribute to our community as well. So, What you've gone through as far as we've worked together on and helping each other out too. Um, I would say just um, after an accident like that, it's easy to just uh, want to give up. And um, I never was really one to like let up because I know that um, I wanted to push hard to fight back. Um, and I just think that um, with the struggles that you've been through, I think it's easy for me to just um, want to work harder for people like that because I know that other people struggle. And with uh, my physical struggles, I wanted to be able to be a light for all those who struggle mentally or physically. So I just think when I had hard days and just wanted to let up and just, um, just give up on softball, give up on therapy and all that stuff, I just think it was um, easy for me to look at others in their situations and just um, work harder for them as well as myself. You don't realize what type of an impact people can have on your life. And Tia is a very good example of 
why leaders are leaders and bringing a positive impact on the community. Um, so I know we mentioned the, the fact of embracing stuff, but when you're an individual and people hear your story, what do you think is the most, the biggest takeaway from what they hear from what you, from your side? Um, I think I just want them to take away that um, no matter what, what you're going through and no matter what struggles you face on a daily basis, I think it's just easy to just let up and um, just let your struggles take over you. And I just think that like letting someone know that you're bigger than your problems and you're bigger than what um, people say that you're going to be. I just think of proving that and proving that you can work harder and just be the best, even though um, you might think that you struggle with certain things, just overcoming that and working harder and even harder um, on the daily just to make goals for yourself and push yourself and achieving those goals. Thank you for tuning in to City Spotlight. You can check out past episodes, including the one you're watching right now on YouTube. To check out recent episodes of Central and Southeastern Illinois towns featured on City Spotlight, search on YouTube, City Spotlight, with the show number and the name of the town. Listed on your screen are the last five episodes of City Spotlight. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com.